All right, everyone, thank you for joining me today. Um, the We're going to be talking about docs as tests, which, as I mentioned, is a strategy for resilient documentation, but put a pin in exactly what that means for the moment. As I said, I'm Manny Silva. I am head of docs at Skyflow, but I'm also codifier of docs as tests. I'm not the first one to pursue this strategy. I'm just the one that put a name to it. But I'm also the maintainer of Doc Detective, uh, which is a documentation testing tool. It's open source. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. Something always breaks when you ship a procedure like this one. When you're ready to get started, click begin. The button says begin. You know it says begin. You made sure that it said begin before you pushed your docs and you are confident in it and you are happy and you are able to meet your deadline and uh, you know hand over your deliverable. The sun is shining. Everything is right in the world. And then three, six, nine months later, you get customer feedback that's passed through support that, oh, hey, this procedure is broken. The button string doesn't work anymore or the button string isn't right. And you say, wait, what do you mean? I know that the button string was right. It's a begin. And so you go to investigate and it's a start now. And you say, but what, what do you mean it says start? It used to say begin. I know it said begin. I documented begin. And you go and you dig and you look in various different logs and talk to different people on your team. And somebody in UX decided, oh, hey, actually start better matches our style or we updated our style and now we want to say start instead of begin. And so they changed it in the UI and that didn't get passed on to you. So your docs got broken and you ended up with a customer who actually took the time to report it. Who knows how many more ran into this and it degraded their trust in you and your product. And then it took the time of the customer service engineer who had to field the request and then pass it along to you. It took more of your time because you had to do all the investigation time of all of the people that you had to talk to, to figure out why your docs were broken and how that change happened all because somebody changed begin to start something always breaks, outdated screenshots, uh, changes to product behavior. And well, documentation testing is exactly what you did when you first wrote it. It was, yeah, I'm gonna verify that this thing worked. And that's been what documentation testing has historically been. It's somebody sits down with the procedure. They write, they make sure that what's written is exactly what the product shows and then they ship it. But then even with the best of communication channels in place, something always slips through the cracks. And I ran into this problem when I was working at Apple. I ran into this problem when I was working at Google. And I asked my engineering friends, hey, you have automated user testing. You have end-to-end uh, -end tests, integration tests, unit tests. Where's the automation? For documentation testing and they laughed and they said manny that's why you have you around i said no this is absolutely not why you have, have me around i'm not going to sit here and do and monitor for every possible change that could possibly happen to all of my documentation and so i decided to fix that now I am a father of three. I promise this is pertinent because when I was on paternity leave for my youngest, I was doing sleep training for my middle son. And for those of you who are familiar with sleep training, it means that there's not a lot of sleep because there are lots, there's lots of screaming. There's lots of shouting. There's lots of trying to get concerned children down to sleep. But I took that and I couldn't focus. I couldn't listen to a podcast. I couldn't listen to a book. I couldn't do anything that took sequential thought. So I decided, you know what? I have a little bit of coding background. This engineering problem, uh, this docs automation testing problem has been bothering me. So I'm going to give it a shot. And by the end of the five weeks, once I finally had my kids sleeping, I had the first version of Doc Detective. 
And this was wonderful. And it was a great MVP. I could go and I could run UI automation tests and do all sorts of stuff, but I had trouble describing exactly what to do to other technical writers because they didn't have a bucket to fit this idea into. It wasn't linting. It wasn't link checking. It wasn't all of these other sorts of wonderful automations and tools that we have available to us. It was something else and they were having a difficult time with it. So I took a step back and I created and I came up with the idea, the label of docs as tests. Now, what exactly is docs as tests? Let's start by it's let's start by talking about what it isn't. There are lots of docs as things that we have out and about. We've got docs as code and Gentle came up with it. It applies inf uh, engineering infrastructure tooling, continuous integration to documentation. It's what allows us to do things like linting and link checking and format checkers. We've got docs as ecosystem uh, from Ketsali Writes and that talks about how to apply learnings from the open source man ecosystem management to the documentation lifecycle. We've got docs observability, which was coined by uh, Fabrizio Ferri Benedetti, uh, that applies engineering telemetry and observability to documentation. And we've got docs as tests, and it is parallel in that it applies engineering testing and behavior assertions to documentation. So in one line, docs as tests is a tool agnostic strategy that keeps your docs in sync with your product. It's a way to test your docs, just like engineers test their code. It's a way to make sure that your docs are always accurate, that they're always complete, that they're always relevant to the product. Now, if you need help framing this in a few different ways, you can think of docs as tests as a way to validate the behavior contracts for a product that you establish with documentation. It's a way to validate a product's US or UX or establish a zero trust relationship between the docs and the product, or just treating procedures as testable assertions. You can validate that that procedure works exactly as written. If you do freshness checking, this is a way of automating it. And most importantly, it's a way of building and maintaining user trust because Trust is hard to earn and easy to lose. And every time you have a bit of your documentation that is outdated, screenshots are old, procedures broken, that degrades user trust. And it's death by a thousand cuts because the more times this happens, the more negative experiences, no matter how small a user has with your product or your company, the more likely they are to leave and find somebody else to work with. Now, again, a few things that Docs' tests isn't is Docs' tests isn't linting. It's not style checking. It's not format checking. It's not link checking. All of these are important. All of these are very important. But these are not validating that the content in your Docs is accurate. Does Docs' test save time? Yes, absolutely, because it enables you to do a whole lot more. When was the last time you did freshness checking? How often do you have to retake your screenshots? Do you embed videos in your docs? What do you do when those are broken? A lot of you have, let's see, let's see exactly how many of you, a great many of you, 18%, at least 42% have at least some of your documentation as machine processable, whether it's DITA, semantic content, perhaps markdown is considered in there too. You can access all of these tools. That means you can also easily access the tools that let you do docs as tests. Now, the core principles of docs as tests, what defines this strategy? First, it's that docs are tests. Documentation asserts that a product behaves a particular way. And you can validate that that is accurate by going and stepping through that behavior and the product. Therefore, it's testable, which means that if A equals B and B equals C, A equals C, docs are tests. And if you don't run those tests for yourself, your users will do it for you. 
And that ends badly. Second is that docs run against the product. They don't run against mocks or not against code samples, unless that's the product itself. Tests need to validate the user's real experience. Whatever you write your docs against is what you need to test your docs against. And those tests need to be repeatable. Tests need to be able to do ongoing validation of your behaviors, of your procedures. If a test isn't resilient enough to be repeated, it's not resilient enough to be trusted. And you need to be able to trust your tests and trust your docs. That's the whole point. And very importantly, doc-based tests don't replace, they coexist with engineering tests. They test something different. Engineering tests handle the code itself. And if a function gives the proper output, given the proper input, doc-based tests validate the documentation content. They validate that your procedure is accurate as written. But how does this all work? I mentioned tools earlier. What are some of these tools? There's a lot, but also not. We've got, the, this is tooling by difficulty for the average writer, not by the average engineer. As you can see, there's a whole lot of advanced stuff. There's a whole lot of stuff out there that is intended for engineers, and it is wildly powerful. And if you are confident in using those tools, wonderful. Go for it. Validate your docs. Test your docs with those tools. But it takes engineering level skills and competence. In the intermediate bucket, we've got Doc Detective, which, as I mentioned earlier, it's an open source documentation test toolkit. It's meant for tech writers. Uh, and we'll see a little bit of it in just a moment. If you are writing code of any sort, then you can write, and you're comfortable with that code to a sufficient degree, you can write unit tests. But again, you have to be comfortable doing that. Then we've got tools like Azure's Innovation Engine that they came out recently and Run Me, which are both excellent tools for running bash commands. But again, you have to be comfortable doing that in the first place. There's nothing today that a novice can just pick up and use. I hope Doc Detective eventually fits in that bucket, but I acknowledge that it doesn't today. But let's take a look at how you might be able to apply Docs' tests with some of these tools. So here's a little bit of markdown. For those who aren't familiar, uh, it just says, oh, hey, to, so to search for American short hair kittens, I like cats, uh, go to DuckDuckGo, and that's a little markup for a hyperlink. And then in the search bar, enter American short hair kittens and press enter. And then down at the bottom, we've got an image reference uh, for the file search results.png. Now, to validate this, you can do it in a variety of the tools that I just mentioned to you. This is how you might do it in Cypress. And this is great if you're used to JavaScript. You see, we've got an assertion, it navigates to DuckDuckGo, searches, and saves a screenshot, and then we've got a whole bunch of actions. And if those all complete, then you can, uh, the test validated that the procedure works as written. Wonderful. But you have to be confident in JavaScript to be able to write this in the first place. Now, if we go over to Playwright, it's about the same. It's a little bigger. But again, you still need familiarity with JavaScript and testing practices. You need to know how tests are written. You need to know how tests are run. There are, is a lot of underlying in, uh, knowledge that goes into this. And here is the equivalent test in Doc Detective. Doc Detective uses a JSON object, which you can find here. It's just a single test. And then we've got the steps. So we go to duck.go.com. We are finding for the search box, and then we're typing in a string. We wait for, for the uh, search results to appear, and then we save a screenshot. But all three of these have a problem because all of them are written separately from your content. And if you go and you update your content, you have to remember to update the equivalent tests. And so what you're really doing is you're running tests 
that you are trusting mirror the documentation. And that's problematic in its own right. So how do we fix that? Well, this is the exact same test with just declared in line with the markdown that we saw earlier. So in that comment, we have, oh, hey, go to duckduckgo.com. Find the search box. It's the exact same object, just specified in line. And so this makes it easier so that, so that when you go in and update your content, you see that the tests are right there and you can update them more easily. But even better, this can also be the exact same text, the exact same markdown. By If you configure things properly, it, Doc Detective can go in and identify, oh, hey, that's a, a hyperlink. So I'm going to make sure that it's valid. Oh, it's prepended by GoTo. I'm actually going to open it up in a web browser. I'm going to type the uh, American short hair kittens because that's in a string. And I'm going to press the enter key and I'm going to save that screenshot. Now, this is real nice for me to talk about all of this, but I think it might be a little more impactful if I show you how it works. So here we've got a little bit of markdown that you can see how it renders over here. This talks about the doc detective documentation and it is just talking about a few different aspects of it. We've got hyperlinks. We've got a little bit of literal text or on screen text that I'm bolding here. And we've got a screenshot that currently doesn't have a file. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to run and uh, command NPX doc detective run tests. And I'm passing in this particular file. And what's going to happen is using a configuration that I set up for it, it's going to programmatically detect uh, tests that it needs to run. And it just ran the tests in that little uh, Chrome window that it opened and it output a report. We can see it here, but it's going to be a little bit easier if we open up the file itself. So we can see, oh, hey, the tests passed. Everything passed. Wonderful. And it detected 12 steps. It made sure that docdetective.com was valid, that the link uh, was accurate. It did a link check automatically. It opened up, yeah, it checked that one too, and then a few more checks. And then it actually opened up this URL in the web browser, as you saw, and then it found uh, elements on the web page matching the descriptions. Yep, description, fields, examples, it found elements matching all of those literal text. Uh, literal strings, and it saved a screenshot. And we can even see if we come back over here, refresh this preview. Uh, let me open it up the hard way. Oh, did I save the wrong thing? There, it saved this image, which is a screenshot of the page that was up for just a moment. And what this does is it allows you to go in and automatically retake screenshots as necessary. And it can even do pixel diffing so that if the UI has notably changed in some way, it can notify you programmatically, oh, hey, your screenshots are out of date. And by the way, here's the new one. Now, we can also, so this is all automatically detected. We can also declare these all in line. And it runs just the same. And you can see, I'll even run it for you right now. This is in line. If you want to declare these in line, then you can, so that you can be absolutely sure exactly what tests are running at any given point in time. And we have another report that, again, everything passed. Wonderful. And do, 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 do. here we go. And now we can see it in line. Um, and so, here we have our markdown that was already there and the file automatically input for it. Now, here is the uh, a bit similar markdown to what I showed you earlier, searching for American short hair kittens, and I can run this test too.
Okay, so we've got all of the content here, uh, all the markdown with all the declared steps, and it just saved a report that, again, checked all those links. It opened the URL, it found the search box, it typed the keys, it pressed enter, it saved the screenshot, and there we go. We have that screenshot again. It's a procedure and now uh, that we validated, run, ran as written, and that we can automatically, programmatically capture screenshots to embed in the documentation so that any steps we decide we want to have visuals for, we can. Additionally, you can also go in and record videos of tests running. That way you can uh, export and embed GIFs or MP4s or whatever file format you so prefer. Now, I've been showing UI testing a whole bunch, but there's more to it than that. You can also do API testing. So for example, here, I'm gonna make an, AP, an HTTP request to this uh, endpoint at Recress. Thank you, anyone listening who supports Recress. Uh, and I'm going to send this object, name Morpheus job leader, and I'm expecting the response to include name Morpheus job leader. And so I'm gonna come in here and run that test. And that's already done. And so we can come down and say, yep, DuckDuckGo returned to 200 okay. And yes, this HTTP request uh, responded as expected and had the data in the response. And we can actually see the response here that yes, indeed, the response data included name Morpheus and job leader, along with a few other items. But you can do, you can also do CLI testing so that if you come here, we're going to run a Docker command, running the Docker hello world uh, example. And we're going to make sure that it outputs hello from Docker as at least part of its output and done. And so we can see, yep, it passed. And we have the entirety of the output. It starts with hello from Docker and the command was executed and it was run. And what this, what this means is that instead of having to go out to so many different tools, learn all of these different tools and how they all work, if, regardless if your content, if your product has a UI, an API, a CLI, SDKs, regardless what the product interface is, you can validate that your code that documents, I'm sorry, that your documentation that has interactions with that product surface area is testable. You can be confident that yes, yes, this all works. This all works exactly as written. Now, how do you get started with all this? Well, there are a few ways, but the, at a high level, you have to choose the appropriate tooling for your product and for your skill level, you run a trial, you expand your scope, and you quite legitimately profit. Now, back to tooling. You have to identify which tooling best uh, meets your current skill set and can validate your product interface. That's a decision you have to make for yourself. Uh, sorry, I can't help you on this presentation, uh, but there is a lot of tooling out there and there's more coming out all the time. But once you choose your tooling, then you start with the smallest meaningful test possible. You identify your most important procedure or possibly your most straightforward procedure and you automate it. And then when that one works, you expand. You create more tests as you can in whatever priority order you so define. And then eventually you create tests for everything that's meaningful, whether that's your entire doc set, whether it's a subset of your doc set, everything you want to be confident in, you continue expanding your scope as you're able. And you can test in different environments. You might test in production on every release or perhaps test in staging before things go out to customers. That way you can catch them before uh, any customers might ever run into them. Or you might test 
both staging and production every release and every day. That way you can help monitor for production issues. And even, and uh, at best, you might even test in development if you are working in a docs's code uh, environment and you have support from your engineering leadership. That way, an engineer can't push anything into the code base that breaks your docs, or at the very least, you're notified of it. And then, like I said, profit. You can verify your content at multiple stages of development. You know, uh, and accurate docs are wonderful pre-sales tools. Uh, I have heard on many, many occasions that customers have or have not gone with a product or a tool based on the documentation. You uh, additionally, you increase your trust in your docs, you increase your users' trust in your docs, and you further reduce support costs. Documentation already defers a lot of cost from support, but remember what I talked about earlier, the whole chain of reporting of receiving a report from a user and everyone that that impacted, you get to avoid that. Additionally, litigation. Do you know how many contracts detail the exact product behaviors? None of them. All of those contracts that our users sign, that our, cus uh, that our companies uh, agree to, say that the product works according to the documentation. And so you really need to make sure that the product works according to the documentation. But again, it gives us peace of mind. We can be confident in our documentation. We can be confident that when an issue arises, we know first and that we can go and fix it as soon as reasonably possible. But there are a few things that you need to be aware of. First is that when you test things, you're actually doing them. You actually saw my computer navigate to DuckDuckGo and do a search. You need to be careful when you take actions, especially if it's in your product. And you have to, if you create something, you need to clean it up. If you have to set up your environment, you have to tear down your testing environment. And only test your data. Whether it's synthetic, whether you enter it manually, doesn't matter. It needs to be yours. Never, ever test on user data. But if you bear all that in mind, when you can automate your tests, when you can automate your docs, you can be confident that your docs match your product. And when you're sure that your docs match your product, you have the peace of mind that your docs are accurate, that your customers, your users can expect a consistent UX between product and documentation. You build their trust in your docs, their trust in your product, their trust in your company. And you give yourself that peace of mind and that confidence. Thank you for listening. Uh, here are a few QR codes. All of these links are in the attachments section for the presentation as well. Um, just to reiterate, Doc's, uh, Doc Detective is fully open source and open contributions. And Doc Detective is not the only tool you can use to fulfill docs as tests as a strategy. We write about all sorts of different tools at docsastests.com. Uh, and if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I like to think I'm pretty friendly and approachable. Thank you.